is Father Jose's Journey to Hell, Purgatory, and Heaven. The following is not a story coming out of the rumor mill. The priest whose testimony is given below is the pastor of a Catholic church in Florida. His testimony is on the website, which is linked to his former parish. Father Jose Maniangat says he died in a traffic accident in 1985 and was taken by his guardian angel to visit heaven, hell, and purgatory and came back to life to continue his ministry as a priest. For more information on Father Jose's ministry, email address, and website, please see the description below this video. And now, here's the testimony of Father Jose. I was born on July 16, 1949 in Kerala, India, to my parents Jose and Teresa Maniangat. I am the eldest of seven children, Jose, Mary, Teresa, Lisama, Zachariah, Vasa, and Tom. At the age of 14, I entered St. Mary's Minor Seminary in Thiruvala and began my studies for the priesthood. Four years later, I went to St. Joseph's Pontifical Major Seminary in Alway, Kerala to continue my priestly formation. After completing seven years of philosophy and theology, I was ordained a priest on January 1, 1975 to serve as a missionary at the Diocese of Thiruvala. In 1978, while teaching at the St. Thomas Minor Seminary in Bathory, I became an active member of the Charismatic Renewal Movement and began conducting charismatic retreats and conferences in Kerala. On Sunday, April 14, 1985, the Feast of the Divine Mercy, I was going to celebrate Mass at a mission church in the north part of Kerala when I had a fatal accident. I was riding a motorcycle when I was hit head-on by a jeep driven by a man who was intoxicated after a Hindu festival. I was rushed to the hospital about 35 miles away. On the way, my soul came out of my body and I experienced death. Immediately, I met my guardian angel. I saw my body and the people who were carrying me to the hospital. I heard them crying and praying for me. At this time, my angel told me, I'm going to take you to heaven, and the Lord wants to meet you and talk with you. He also said that on the way, he wanted to show me hell and purgatory. First, the angel escorted me to hell. It was an awful sight. I saw Satan and the devils and the unquenchable fire of about 2,000 Fahrenheit degrees. Worms crawling, people screaming and fighting, others being tortured by demons. The angel told me that all of these sufferings were due to unrepented moral sins. Then I understood that there are seven degrees of suffering, or levels, according to the number and kinds of mortal sins committed by their earthly lives. The souls looked very ugly, cruel, and horrific. It was a fearful experience. I saw people whom I knew, but I am not allowed to reveal their identities. The sins that convicted them were mainly abortion, homosexuality, euthanasia, hatefulness, unforgiveness, and sacrilege. The angel told me that if they had repented, they would have avoided hell and gone instead to purgatory. I also understood that some people who repent from these sins might be purified on earth through their suffering. This way, they can avoid purgatory and go straight to heaven. I was surprised when I saw in hell even priests and bishops, some of whom I've never expected to see. Many of them were there because they had misled the people with false teaching and bad example. After the visit to hell, my guardian angel escorted me to purgatory. Here too, there are seven degrees of suffering and unquenchable fire. But it was far less intense than hell, and there was neither quarreling nor fighting. The main suffering of these souls is their separation from God. Some of those who are in purgatory committed numerous mortal sins, but they were reconciled with God before their death. Even though these souls are suffering, they enjoy peace and the knowledge that one day they will see God face to face. I had the chance to communicate with the souls in purgatory. 
they asked me to pray for them and tell the people to pray for them as well so they can go to heaven quickly. When we pray for these souls, we receive their gratitude from their prayers. And once they enter heaven, their prayers become even more meritorious. It is difficult for me to describe how beautiful my guardian angel is. He is radiant and bright. He is my constant companion and helps me in all my ministries, especially my healing ministry. I experience His presence everywhere I go, and I'm grateful for His protection in my daily life. Next, my angel escorted me to heaven, passing through a big, dazzling white tunnel. I never experienced this much peace and joy in my life. Then immediately, the heaven opened up and I heard the most delightful music, which I never heard before. The angels were singing and praising God. I saw all the saints, especially Blessed Mother and Saint Joseph and many dedicated holy bishops and priests who were shining like stars. And when I appeared before the Lord, Jesus told me, I want you to go back into the world. I want you to be an instrument of peace and healing to my people. You will walk in a foreign land and you will speak a foreign tongue. Everything is possible with you with my grace. After these words, the Blessed Mother told me, Do whatever He tells you, and I will help you in your ministries. Words cannot express the beauty of heaven. There we find so much peace and happiness, which exceed a million times our imagination. Our Lord is far more beautiful than any image can convey. His face is radiant and luminous and more beautiful than a thousand rising suns. The pictures we see in the world are only a shadow of His magnificence. The Blessed Mother was next to Jesus. She was so beautiful and radiant. None of the images we see in this world can compare to her real beauty. Heaven is our real home, and we are all created to reach heaven and enjoy God forever. Then I came back to the world with my angel. While my body was still at the hospital, the doctor completed all examinations and I was pronounced dead. The cause of death was bleeding. My family was notified and since they were far away, the hospital staff decided to move my dead body to the morgue. Because the hospital did not have air conditioners, they were concerned that the body would decompose quickly. As they were moving my dead body to the morgue, my soul came back to the body. I felt an excruciating pain because of so many wounds and broken bones. I began to scream and then the people became frightened and ran away screaming. One of them approached the doctor and said, the dead body is screaming. The doctor came to examine the body and found that I was alive. So he said, father is alive. It is a miracle. Take him back to the hospital. Now, back at the hospital, they gave me blood transfusions and I was taken to surgery to repair the broken bones. They worked on my lower jaw, ribs, pelvic bone, wrists, and right leg. After two months, I was released from the hospital, but my orthopedic doctor said that I would never walk again. I then said to him, the Lord who gave me my life back and sent me back to the world will heal me. We were all praying for a miracle. Still, once at home with the cast removed, I was not able to move. But one day while praying, I felt an extraordinary pain in my pelvic area. After a short while, the pain disappeared completely and I heard a voice saying, you are healed, get up and walk. I felt the peace and healing power on my body. I immediately got up and walked. I praised and thanked God for the miracle. I reached my doctor with the news of my healing and he was amazed. He said, your God is a true God. I must follow your God. The doctor was Hindu and he asked me to teach him about our church. After studying the faith, I baptized him and he became Catholic. Following the message from my guardian angel, I came to the United States on November 10th, 
1986 as a missionary priest. First, I worked in the Diocese of Boise, Idaho from 1987 to 1989, and then became the Director of Prison Ministry in the Diocese of Orlando, Florida from 1989 to 1992. In 1992, I came to the Diocese of St. Augustine where I was first assigned to St. Matthew's Parish in Jacksonville for two years. I was then appointed parochial vicar of Assumption Church from 1994 to 1999. In 1997, I was incarnated as a permanent member of the diocese. From June 1999 to June 2011, I was pastor of St. Mary's Mother of Mercy Catholic Church in McClenny, Florida. I also served as the Catholic chaplain for Florida State Prison in Stark Union Correctional Institution in Rayford and Northeast Florida State Hospital in McClenny. On July 1st, 2011, I was assigned to St. Catherine of Siena Catholic Church in Orange Park, Florida. I am also the diocesan spiritual director of the Legion of Mary. On the first Sunday of each month, I conduct a Eucharistic and a Charismatic healing ministry at my current parish, St. Catherine of Siena Catholic Church in Orange Park, Florida. I have been invited to conduct the healing ministry in other major cities in the United States, including New York, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., San Jose, Dallas, Chicago, Birmingham, Denver, Boise, Idaho Falls, Hawaii, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Poolsville, and many other countries. Ireland, Spain, Czech Republic, India, France, Portugal, Yugoslavia, Italy, Canada, Mexico, Cayman Island, and Ontario. Through this Eucharistic healing ministry, I have seen many people healed physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. People with various diseases such as cancer, AIDS, arthritis, heart conditions, eye problems, emphysema, asthma, back pains, bad hearing, and many others have been healed completely. In addition, several times during the year, I conduct a special healing service for the healing of the family tree, in which the effects from ancestral sins are blocked and the person receives complete healing. Scripture says that the effects from family sins can linger around for three to five generations. Exodus chapter 34 verse 7. So in many cases, we need generational healing. Doctors and medicines do not help to heal certain sicknesses caused by our family tree. During the healing ministry, many people rest in the spirit before the blessed sacrament, and some experience renewal of the soul and healing of the body. Father Jose is leaving St. Catharines of Siena effective April 15, 2016. He is retiring from active parish duties to full-time healing ministry with the bishop's approval and permission. The bishop has allowed him to share his healing ministry with faithful Catholics throughout the world. He will have more freedom to travel and serve. In the meantime, Father Jose remains in the Jacksonville, Florida area. In his ministry today, Father Maniangat often stresses the need to pray for souls in purgatory. This is an act of fraternal charity. They are part of our family, the mystical body of Christ, he said. What goes around comes around, he added. Once they are in heaven, they will be saints, he said. And they can pray for us, and their prayers are powerful. Heaven shined like the sun and included millions of souls praising God. On his website, this statement appears in bold above the story of his out-of-body experience. Neither the Diocese of St. Augustine nor any other Catholic Church authorities have investigated, approved, or in any way endorsed the factual or theological contents of the Father Jose story. Some believe the story of his visit to the hereafter, others don't. I told my guardian angel, no one's going to believe I saw these things, Father Maniangat said. My angel replied, don't worry about it. Many people refused to believe Jesus. Linda Chataway of Orange Park is a believer. She worked with Father Maniangat as a parish secretary and now maintains his website.
It's a private revelation, so it's up to you if you want to believe it or not, she said. I do, because I've seen the fruits of his ministry, both miraculous healings and, more importantly, many people coming to the faith. Chataway said Father Maniangat was faithful to church authorities and not only talks the talk, but walks the walk. Father tells people to pray, fast, and go to confession, he said. He does all these things himself. Jennifer Carbajal of Middleburg, Florida, first began attending Father Maniangat's monthly healing masses a decade ago. She too has witnessed conversions and healings, as well as a revival of her faith. Before, I was living my life for myself, Carbajal told OSV. Now, I want to live every day for Jesus. The humble, down-to-earth priest gives all the glory to Jesus, she added, and wants to do all he can to bring people to heaven. Finally, if you wish to meet Father Jose, try asking your local pastor to invite Father Jose to your parish. Or you may periodically visit Father Jose's website for any future Eucharistic healing masses.